a lot of people did not want to publish this book. <laughs> I feel like this book was a difficult thing to get published. Um, and that it, in, we definitely wanted to see it as a book so badly um, because it's such a, it's writing and you want to take time with that writing and it's image which in this form it really is about two languages that are operating at the same level and we both believe I think that image and words operate equally and they both have a language that's very powerful and strong that is super compatible and kind of enhances the other language so a book is the ultimate form for that. I thought is there a way that we can look at writing and drawing that responds to each other but not with the writing leading which is kind of traditional illustration but also with the drawing leading writing and the writing leading drawing equally so I asked Emily if she would like to try a collaboration with me long distance over the internet because we never lived in the same city that would um, be her writing and my drawing and the way we started it was that Emily sent me a kind of poem and I looked at it, I would make two drawings, send her the second drawing, back and forth over the course of, in total, about 10 years before the completion of the project, which was just kind of last year we finished it up. But it was the, I mean, our entire 30s were taken up with this. And we, we moved a lot of places, we lived a lot of places, we had a lot of stuff going on in our lives during that period. And it was this one through line through our friendship and our practice was coming back to this whenever we could. Someone might say the book is bloodthirsty. Like, I don't think that there's any, like, lust for blood in the book that's about, you know, perpetuating and celebrating violence in any way, you know? But it's about acknowledging violence. Yeah, it is. It's a revenge fantasy for, like, it's a, mm -hmm. a, it's a revenge fantasy um, for women, for the female characters, and for me. Uh, and it's true, like the soldiers aren't afraid of blood is quite yeah, and, and that's like deeply blood. bloodthirsty. And but this illustration on the cover book, I, I that was one of the drawings that I led and gave to her for her to make a story about, and that one was about living in Finland, and Finland still has ma mandatory um, conscription, so they have that more part of their kind of colloquial culture. And I'd heard a saying just casually, someone saying, and I, I overheard it, soldiers aren't afraid of blood. It was just like a little casual, and I was like, wow, I've never heard, what does that mean, soldiers aren't afraid of blood? And they're like, oh, well, it's actually about having sex during menstruation. And that would be like something that a woman might say to a man, soldiers aren't afraid of blood. <laughs> and the guys were like really cool, and I thought, that's pretty fantastic, I'm going to make that drawing. And it kind of, like the shaming of men that men get about being brave and being strong and being a soldier, like get out there and be a soldier, which is just as shaming and awful to so many men as it would be women are gonna to make to feel about their regular body and how it works, you know? The impulse to tell, um, to confess, is um, a rejection of shame. Mm -hmm. The idea of being of silencing difficult content is really like you you go and hold that in another room, please, because we don't really want to deal with you. So you are by yourself with this shitty thing that is going to make everybody feel a lot more comfortable if you just go away and and hang out with that shitty thing. And there is part of a, you know kind of a feeling sometimes, and it is a feminist kind of principle of like, no, I don't want to hang out with that shitty thing by myself because we are all, uh, we all have a relationship to this shitty thing and we can share this thing and we can, you know, become empowered and we don't have to let it be more powerful than us. Like, let's put it in its rightful place of perspective. And it's also very normal. Everybody's dealing with these things, so no one should have to be by themselves dealing with it over there because it's more of a, a empathy. Like, if we reveal this, other people tend to identify and empathize and no one has to feel lonely and, like, shunned by that, you know?